Hey everyone, it's Mark here again and welcome back to DigiProfits. In today's video we're going to look at the cryptocurrency market and we're going to look in particular at Bitcoin and where things are heading. And the main reason we're going to focus a little bit on Bitcoin today is because a lot of the altcoins um, and so forth are all heavily influenced by what's going on with Bitcoin. Even at times when they outperform Bitcoin, if Bitcoin drops too far or moves up really fast, uh, they eventually all get swept up with it anyway. So without further ado, let's get underway. So short term time frames, we're looking at, um, you know, obviously things have just been in a little channel here, just hitting the tops, bouncing down, bouncing up, higher lows, higher highs. Uh, that's what's been happening. But um, in the next uh, 48 hours or so, we've got the FT. Um, so we've got the Fed meeting um, about interest rates. Uh, will they go up 75 basis points? Will they go up 100 basis points? Um, and so forth. And when you consider that so many people, when interest rates dropped and money printing was going through the roof so many people just took out extra mortgages and stuff like that to go buy crypto <laughs> um back in um covid times and so forth there's a lot of people now going oh wait a minute my interest rates have now gone up i need to pay back that mortgage um so you're finding and and that's not the only issue with the interest rates rising but that's just one of many that cause um people to sell crypto because they have to not because they want to because they have to and then they go ahead and they they pay back some of that borrowed money so to speak so when borrowed money was used to buy crypto and now those interest rates are way higher because they weren't fixed in for long enough then they they get caught out on the hop especially if they're on a floating rate so um and that's just one area um obviously as interest rates rise more money is held in cash, um, property prices long term go down, short term they take a while for that effect to take place, uh, but it does uh, happen also, stock market, everything. It does go down for a short period until it gets baked in. Um, I would argue that some of it is baked in that um, because the stock market traders, everything, they already know it's likely to go up. People are making plans around their money as though interest rates are going up and not everybody reads or understands all of this stuff so there's still a lot of people out there that get caught on the hop um, and that with those rates likely to go up um, there is a high possibility that we could have further downside action but let's look at it from a technical perspective now uh, from a technical perspective i saw a lot of people saying um, just before this drop here a lot of people were basically saying this here um i'm gonna draw it on here this this is before we dropped through it this is a bull flag okay that's what they're saying there there and then bang up this is a bull flag and i would say on a four hour time frame uh you know even on a one day time frame, if it looked like a bull flag, it's too short a time period for a, a true bull flag to take place. They're, they're normally over longer term periods. These flags are, are more accurate. They're very inaccurate and they're probably 50 50 possibility. Um, realistically, like I, um, I was shorting from about, uh, where did I short from? I, I shorted from this turning red on my indicator. So about here, I shorted. Yes, it went down. Yes, it went back up to here. At that point, I was behind by a tiny bit on my short, and now I'm ahead by quite a bit on my short. Uh, I was shorting Harmony 1, uh, mostly. A um, little bit of AVAX as well, but mostly Harmony 1, um, just due to the fact that they're the altcoin that had the hack recently um, and so forth. So... I saw that it was more likely to bleed against Bitcoin and stuff if there's downside action. Um, it will bounce like any other coin bounces uh, due to the way trading works with shorts and longs and all of that sort of stuff. But uh, at the moment, either we're going to stop as we test this 200 week moving average, sorry, 200 moving average on the four hourly, and there's already a bounce as we hit here that often holds as support, or we're going to go right through it. 
Uh, this is not the 200 week moving average, it's the 200 lots of four hours moving average. Well, we're gonna go right through it um, and test this trend line again. Now, if I zoom out further from a technical perspective here, before we talk about macro and stuff, technical perspective here, if you zoom out and you look at it, um, in fact, I've, I've got another one drawn, not this one. Um, oh no, that's right, I got rid of my drawing. Um, I will just draw it in again. We will see that we already just had this sort of thing happen over here as well, where we had a, what's actually, what people were saying is a bull flag on that little bit there. This is a bear flag, see, down across. That's a bear flag. It's just played out over a longer period. So down, across, we've had a similar period now, and we're about to have the same um, decisions coming out. And if um, if the there's a dip on the interest rates, and then it causes one or two companies to capitulate, you know, like we had with Celsius and Three Arrows, or like we had with you know going back further with um, with Luna, you know, so you, capitulations of certain big organisations cause things to go a lot further. So if there's another capitulation of somebody that we're not even thinking of, who knows, then you could end up down at another fib level down, so to speak. You, you could end up um, down, um, I think the, the next fib level down might have been uh, 1400 or something like that. It's totally in play. I'm not saying it's going to happen. Let's not get too deterministic about these things, but, um, but we are still in a downtrend and we're not out of the downtrend until we go um, above about 28.50 and we have uh, enough closes above there, then um, there's an argument to say that we could well be in an uptrend. Um, I won't explain that in detail. I may get to that at some point in this video, but um, essentially the way we're, we're looking, uh, there's a higher chance of a downside move than there is of an upside move, even though I know that most of the major YouTubers are saying that um, this is the bottom and you know, because historically, if you look at all of the, um, if you look at all of the linear regress, logarithmic regression graphs, and all of that sort of stuff, you're going to find that. Um, so that's the S and P 500. Um, I will pause the video and just bring up a logarithmic regression graph. Okay, I brought one up, and as you can see, generally. We don't go below the white line. We, we stick on the white line, and that's usually the lows. Um, obviously, historically, we had the, the black swan event with um, COVID, and we went down to the blue. Um, as I've said in other videos, I think this will be the time we go below the blue, and yes, we did. Okay, we went right below it. These, um, these regression graphs, I think this is the time that they break um, because it's a macro low, not a just a Bitcoin halving cycle. We're actually looking at the first event in the history of Bitcoin, because it's only been around 12 years, that the macro itself is in a, in a bit of a state, just like uh, perhaps the, the subprime mortgage crisis, which came about before Bitcoin was around. Um, that was the first one, that was the last one in a macro level. So Bitcoin hasn't been through one, hence this could be the lowest Bitcoin goes relative to its various regression graphs and people don't always uh, say that uh, I, I rarely hear that um, so but anyway um, looking at uh, the 200 week moving average um, people are saying well we don't stay below it for very long and that's true we normally stay above it look we hold it as support here we just whipped below it for a day or two stayed above it here we're actually holding below it. So what's the history on holding below it? How long do we go below it if we do? Um, I might have to bring up a different graph for that. Actually, I haven't been able to find one for Bitcoin, of course. I'm thinking of the stock market when it comes to going below the 200 week moving average. But let's look back at the stock market now. Um, how long does it go below the 200 week? Not very long. It just flipped up under there for COVID. Um, not for very long, haven't even touched it yet with the stock market this time around. So that's another thing, the reason why I think that'll at least test it, the very least. But when it's gone below, which has been a long time since it's been below the 200 week moving average, there we go, capitulation. And that's that's never happened in the history of Bitcoin, that it has been around during a major stock market and housing market. 
and basically global assets capitulation and that is 2009 so we're like drifting below it for a bit too long can't push through it kabang capitulation okay so that's that's what happens um here below the 200 week below the 200 week can't seem to push above it capitulation okay so there is that concern if you do not push above it now we're not even below it yet so that's a good thing uh, from a stock market perspective but if that rises up to here and we push below it and we stick and we can't get above it the whole stock market could potentially have a big capitulation um, it's not guaranteed that that will happen um, totally money printers could turn back on the fed could talk about being dovish in future periods they might say look 75 basis point hike but we anticipate that the next two periods are going to be maybe a 25 basis point hike and then a zero hike so then we may only just get to the point of testing the 200 week moving average and we may not even test it down here we may test it while it's a bit higher like up here um, and then we may be maybe away so it's quite possible there's a lot of good arguments that say that we it may be about november that we hit that point where we we might get the stock market and we finally reach its low and then it goes on its merry way again just like this period here 2018 or even here we're only just wicked below for a short period and then went up and our major capitulation like 2009 that can may get kicked down the road another four five six years uh through getting back to money printing again um totally they could kick the can down the road and that might happen um okay so i want to show you another view on this before i give you price predictions um all right so looking at bitcoin now basically and and most markets are like this if you get a big broadening wedge here like that um, then, whoops, so you, you're basically you're finding that your highs are going very steep and then your lows are kind of flattening. They're going steep, but not as steep as the highs. So those the swings are quite big. So what tends to happen is you go once, twice, three times, and then bang, you, you have your correction, right? And this is over a long period of time. This is a weekly time frame for Bitcoin. So you've got your broadening wedge and then you've got your bear market okay so let's look as this continues okay broadening wedge bear market slow accumulation and then a new broadening wedge as you can see broadening wedge and bear market and accumulation and then broadening wedge bear market accumulation broadening wedge that we're in now I know sorry there's a lot of lines here <laughs> I have a lot of trend lines going on um, so broadening wedge and then bear market and then possible accumulation that's if this plays out the same way now do we always reach our apex see our apex there apex there on that trend line trend line um, trend line from the highs across there trend line from the lows there do we always reach our apex no uh, here look the apex was here did we reach it well we kind of did in that we just had COVID hit and we just capitulated straight through to it there early hit it early um, you could argue that we were heading there anyway and you could argue that that trend line perhaps perhaps I've got that a little bit too sharp but I've got that basically based on when it was dipping down and sometimes you break through it out of it but then you revisit it anyway um, like we did here it's like does going sideways through it mean that you're out no bang we, we still hit the apex right on schedule here um, in that case um, over here where are we looking here yeah, I mean there wasn't really an apex because the the um, in terms of the bear market the lows were very consistent across there I know there was a big blow off bottom there but that was all in a day um, so that didn't really hit an apex, although the, you could argue that the apex was based on the, the secondary high here and then these lows there, bang, it, it did hit that apex. Um, so, I mean, there's, and there's nothing guaranteed about hitting these things, these trend lines and stuff, because at the end of the day, it's, it's a lot of it's based on the global macro, everything that's going on, supply shortages, oil, people having to spend less money, uh, people being forced to sell assets that they would rather keep, but they have to sell. They sell a house. 
if the interest rates are too high that they can't pay the mortgage. They'll sell Bitcoin if they have to. Okay, so, and people will panic sell, and then you've got leveraged sellers getting knocked out as well. There's no guarantees you're going to hit that apex, but um, certainly that would be another way of saying, well, that's just another case for where a bottom could be. Um, based on a number of different trend lines. I mean, even trending from the high here to the next high to the to the next top there, that all sort of trends through to there as well. Same with all of these lows from, you know, COVID and back there uh, before COVID. Um, it's it's kind of interesting. Um, may not head there. Totally may not. Um, can't be too deterministic because the moment you think you know everything, you find you don't. Um, but I would say that we are more likely than not to end up going down here. But what would invalidate that? Uh, just looking at the Fibonacci levels, if we are to drop down lower, um, I don't have all my fibs on here, but if we are to drop down lower, then we're either going to retest 17,750 around that level. And then you find, oh, tested it once, twice. Look, look, look at this. We test, 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 test. If you can do that and hold a crossways, then that could be it, and then you're up. That's fine. That I mean, that's one way of doing it, uh, of it happening. Uh, another case is you, you end up breaking through it, in which case we're looking at fourteen three two three as our next level. Fourteen three two three, um, before we're looking at our um, level down to uh, twelve hundred ten, and then our eight and a half. So that would this is that level that we're talking about that apex, um, you know, around November if that was the absolute bottom i don't think it'll go below that i don't even necessarily think it'll go to there it's hard to see it going to there but i'm just painting the possibility so you don't go all in just because you think this is as low as it could possibly go you bet at a dollar cost average uh, into anything because the altcoins if you're in altcoins they may go even further down that's the issue with it um okay so um with that in mind um I'll be watching carefully. If you if we break through and we go below 1750, chances are it's going to just carry on through all the way to that 1450. Chances are before the next bounce. May it, it it's you know looking at the trend line there, that's about where you you'd think it would bounce. That looks about right for the short term frame that we're in. Um, probably we're not going to go to 12 yet. If Yet it totally could. Now, what's going to invalidate that is if we manage to get through to the next fib level up, which is at 28.539, and we break through it. So you go through there, break through it, hold it as support, then, you know, you, you could say that now we're in definitely an accumulation phase, and then um, and, and we're going from there. And that could happen because you could say that this was the capitulation already, and now we're already in accumulation, but sometimes you don't realize it until a lot of time has gone past and maybe the next interest rate hike is so baked in and all the companies that are gonna capitulate already have. And then you, then what you get is if you get past here, all the people that are holding out for say Bitcoin down at these levels, like with my apex at 8,000 or at 12,000 or at 14,000, all these people holding out all of a sudden FOMO in and they help liquidate the shorts, and then you get this big bounce. You, you might get a retest there, but when all these shorts get liquid, uh, longs get liquidated there, and then, and then you carry on up. So, you know, um, that's why if you're gonna do any shorting, set some tight rules around when you're gonna short. Don't short just because I said that I think that it might end up with a leg down, because all it takes is a couple of big whales to uh, go ahead and buck the trend for a couple of days and you end up getting wiped out. So you've got to be careful that you set some stop losses. I did post another video showing how I go about my shorting and stuff like that, like, you know, the various metrics I'm using and why I'm using this kind of chart that, that colors the lines red, even though technically some of those are green bars, but it, it, it can see like we're below the trend, like we're trending down now. It's clearly, so it just keeps you in check you know, where it's confirmation, like the trend down, it's confirmed, it's, got, it's broken through our indicator line here as well. So you know, right, this is a good time to short from because we're on our way down now. Um, and you could either take profit like hitting the moving average or when you hit the trend line or take some profit here, some there. Um, 
but but what what's the point in shorting from here it's almost like well you can only get from here to here maybe though i guess if you end up going that next leg down um, i would just be very careful if i was shorting if i were you i'd be from here i've already been shorting from up there so it's not such a big deal for me like but i'd be thinking about setting those um you know the stop loss maybe above the wick up here like about here 22 400 you know like somewhere quite tight like always have your um, the point where you get out of your short and go, you know what, I shorted from the wrong spot, get out there because there's no point, once you break past there, you're probably get, heading back up to the top of the trend line anyway, so you may as well revisit when you're going to short. Um, and perhaps you're going to break through it. If, if we don't, if we end up breaking above rather than even testing here, we, but we could be on our way to 2800 before coming down again. Things don't move in a straight line. We could totally go all the way to 2800 there and then just like we did up here look we went from where did we go from we went from 33 to 48 33 to 48 you could easily go from 17 to 28 and then end up with your next leg down bang like that and then that be the bottom like totally could um so anyway my the way i see it i think that we're going to at least retest the 17.5 um but that's just i'm just some guy on youtube do your own research please um you know, I'm wrong, um, I don't know what percentage of the time now, I think I'm wrong at least 25% of the time, so I would say, make sure, do your own research, and um, like I say, set tight stop losses, but also, uh, if you're going to go for a short, then make sure that you don't take profit too early, because what's the point in taking a short unless you're going to actually make something half decent out of it, so that's why I, I like to say short from here, uh, might set a stop loss just a, a you know a tiny bit above here, but I'll be taking profit way down here, like so it's a lot, like it's three to one or something along those lines, um, so that way you do pretty well out of the shorts. And I like I say I don't short Bitcoin. Um, I'd rather short an altcoin that has had some weakness lately. Like look up the altcoins that have been hacked, all of that sort of stuff. What's the altcoin people will get nervous about if Bitcoin has a big dip? Um, look at that if you're going to do a short. Why short Bitcoin when you can short an altcoin that may potentially um, go further down if um, if there's a problem because that's often going to give you a bigger payout. Um, okay, so anyway, I hope that that all makes sense. Um, let me know what you think. Where do you think things are going? I, I, do you think we're heading up towards 28 to test that first? Uh, do you think we'll break through? Do you think that we're going to go down? Um, to here or break through and end up at another leg down 1400 or, or below what where do you think things are heading when do you think things are going to turn do you think that um things will turn in a roundabout like i say in around about three months uh is kind of what i'm thinking or do you think it's going to be further ahead do you think it's going to be sometime next year or do you think things already have turned and we're at that phase where people can't see it yet but we're already in the accumulation and it's only going to be up from here i uh, love to hear your thoughts and opinions uh, for those people asking, yes, I will post more DFK, DeFi Kingdoms videos and stuff like that soon. I really just wanted to broaden the channel first. Um, I want to cover a lot of different areas that I make money from digital um, digital products and profits and so forth. Um, and, you know, just make sure that there's more breadth of information across the wider market, but definitely keen to get back into that as well and update you guys uh, a little bit more regularly there too. Okay, so that's it for this particular video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now, everybody.